My name's Jeff Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Lyon. Anthony J. Lyon. I'm the lion's eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan, investigators stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of The Diamond Quartet. Well, this is the way it started. Melody called about 6 o'clock that night. She gave me the name of a restaurant out on the strip and said that Lion was waiting for me. I drove out there and found him squatting at one of the corner tables. He had a big white napkin tucked under all of his chins, and he was working on a plate of crab louis and a bottle of beer. A tall peroxide blonde in slacks and dark glasses was sitting across from him, watching him eat. And a couple of bald-headed waiters were just sort of standing around looking at the ceiling. Well, well, Regan, I see you got my message. Right on time. Sit down, sit down. I want you to meet Miss, um... What did you say your name was, young lady? Madge will do. Just plain Madge, fatso. Mm, uh, Regan, this is Madge. I hate gumshoes. They all stink. Okay, where'd you find her? Madge? Oh, um, Madge works for Mr. Daly, Mr. Pete Daly. He's a new client of ours. Isn't that right, uh, Madge? Oh, gumshoes are nosy. That's why I don't like them. Madge is going to drive you out to Mr. Daly's residence, Regan. Who's Daly? Very nice chap. Very nice chap. I spoke with him on the phone. Uh, what's the job? Well, it's a rather delicate matter, and I think Mr. Daly himself can explain it better than I. Come on, all this gas ain't getting us nowhere. The boss is waiting. Gumshoes talk too much. Uh, yes, Regan, yes. I told Mr. Daly you'd be there by 7 o'clock. You just run along with Madge here and see what it's all about. That drift. Uh, nice to have met you, Madge. Ah, dry up, fatso. Yeah, go on, go on. Um, uh, call me, Regan. Call me if you're running into any trouble. Just plain Madge, who was carrying a twenty-five automatic in her purse. When we got into a Cadillac, we went out the pass, turned off a hill and back of Burbank. Daly's residence was... At the end of a private road, a nice old southern-style place with two or three private patrolmen guarding the entrance. They all needed shade. They kind of nodded when we got out of the car and went up to the front door. Naturally, there was a peep shutter there. It was real southern. Yeah? It's me, Felix. This is the private peeper the boss wants to see. Okay, me. Come on this way. Who is it? Madge, I got your peeper. Inside. Here he is, Pete. Flat feet and all. His name's Regan. Okay, Madge, that's all. Beat it. Um, sit down, Regan, sit down. Don't mind Madge. She's kind of antisocial. Nice place you got. How's the gross? You know, I do all right. Two crap tables, two faro games, a little roulette in the living room, but I have to be careful. I noticed that driving up. There's lots of money thrown around here every night. Somebody might get some ideas. You know how it is. What about the law? Law? <laughs> no trouble with them. I just don't let them know I'm in operation. Mm -hmm. In my business, I haven't much use for private detectives. I don't generally like them. Neither does Madge. But I happen to need one right now. I want you to do a little job for me. You seem to have plenty of help around here. Wasn't that Felix Frazier at the door there? Last time I saw him, he was shadowing a banker up in Sacramento. Yes, that was Felix, all right, but uh, it's a little different. Yeah. Never seen this before? No? Well, it's a little bit of necklace called the Diamond Quartet. It's worth quite a chunk of cash. These four diamonds are good stuff. So? Dame named Annabella Callender left it here a week ago. She was in kind of deep at the roulette table and was wearing this. She left it for security. How much did she lose? About five Gs, I guess. Kind of screwy little dame. She's a widow with a lot of money and a boyfriend named Teddy Silco. He paints or something. They come here. And she loses steady. Every time. <laughs> well, she sent me a check today for the full amount of what she lost. Yeah? And uh, I want you to take this thing back to her tonight. That it? That's it. I got my dough. She gets a little diamond necklace back. 
Just business. Well, it sounds simple. It's simple. You're a licensed investigator, bonded, insured. Don't want any fuss about this. You just take it back. Very simple. Okay. Now, you told me how simple it all is. Suppose you give me the hook. Did her check bound? You, uh, want a drink? There wasn't any check. I thought it'd be something like that. Yeah. She called me a couple of hours ago, said if I didn't have this thing back by tonight, she'd call a load of cops and come out and get it. Not such a dumb dame as that. As you're telling me. <clears throat> if she comes here with cops, I'm closed for the season, and this dump cost me a pile of dough. Felix was running the roulette table that night. I didn't know he'd taken this as security until we counted up. I should have pushed his mush in or something, letting a dame like that make a setup. Yeah, maybe you'll do better next time. Ain't gonna be no next time, Reagan. Here's her address. Here's the ice. Just take it to her and I'll chalk it up to experience. You better get yourself a new boy at that table. Yes, you're telling me. You're telling me. Well, I took a taxi over to the restaurant in Hollywood, picked up my Buick and drove to an apartment house near Pico and Beverly Drive. A couple of men in a little gray coupe were sitting in front of the building smoking cigarettes and pulling on their hat brims. I figured Daly was making sure I got the right address. Upstairs on the fifth floor, I leaned into the buzzer and waited to see what Mrs. Annabella Callender looked like. Oh, Teddy, I thought you'd never get here. The performance begins at 8.15 and you know the traffic. Uh, oh, you aren't there. You Annabella Callender? Of course. Who are you? My name's Regan. Oh, Miss Regan. Well, I'm only waiting for Ted to get here so we can make first taking to the Biltmore. We're seeing Carousel, and we're going to be late if he doesn't get here. You can understand that. Yeah, that figures. And I I'm all ready, and he hasn't shown up. Well, good night. Yeah, her white ermine cape and the black strapless thing needed a touch. But she had it. That necklace I had in my pocket, or a very good copy, was hanging around her neck, and it looked like four Klieg lights at a Hollywood premiere. Hey, 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 lay off, lay off, you busted door, lay off. What's the idea? You want to bust down the door? You drunk or something? I've been pounding on this door for five minutes. Well, that's too bad. Can't you read the signs? This building's closed. The scram drift. Push off floor. Uh, you got a jeweler in this building named Tartaglia? Yeah, we got a jeweler named Tartaglia. Only don't want to see nobody because it's 9 o'clock at night. The joint's closing ain't here. All right, slow down. He lives someplace, don't he? Sure. There's a lot of houses that way. Why don't you try knocking on doors? There wasn't any residence listed in the phone book. I thought maybe if I came down here to his office, you could tell me where I might see him. I ain't going to tell you nothing. Look, I'm a private investigator. I got to see him tonight. Oh, uh... How's little old expense account, Pilgrim? It'll do. Let me see, pal. <coughs> the name's Freddie Leach. Your boy's a fat old pile of blubber with a lot of talk in this note. White Hotel, 208, three blocks, straight ahead. Thanks, Freddie. Anytime, pal. Brother Sawbuck, I'll tell you where his girlfriend lives. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Regan. Come in, come in. You find me a bit indisposed at this hour. I was preparing to retire, but you said it was a matter of jewelry. Therefore, Bert Tartaglia is at your service. Now then, sir, what is so urgent? I came to see you about a diamond necklace. I found your name stamped on the inside. House of Tartaglia, most respected name in diamonds as in all the lapidary arts. Most respected. I'm the last of four sons. All of... <sighs> Continue, Mr. Regan. Take a look at this. And how do you come into possession of the Diamond Quartet, sir? A man named Daly, who runs a gambling club, hired me to take it back to a lady named Callender. Gambling house? And how did Mr. Daly acquire it? Well, she lost it at a roulette table. She left it so she could raise the cash. Deplorable, deplorable conduct on her part. Annabella Callender, a very indiscreet young lady, to be sure, to be sure. Lovely body, propelled by a ridiculous man. I tried to take it back to her tonight. Beautiful. Isn't it, Mr. Regan? Beautiful. I want to know if it's real or not. Real? Of course it's real. You sure? Mr. Regan, do you doubt my ability as a gemologist? Once in a lifetime, sir, only once in a lifetime, does an artisan have the opportunity to create the perfect necklace. How much will it pull? Priceless in the amount of work. Roughly $65,000. See, here, under the light. See how carefully each stone is mounted. 
Without reservation, I pronounce the Diamond Quartet an incomparable masterpiece. Well, I saw one just like it tonight. Eh? I didn't quite follow you, sir. No one could create another Diamond Quartet except Bert Tartaglia. Well, and somebody made up a pretty good imitation. <laughs> the finest workman at best would create only a crude resemblance. This kind of work demands an artist, Mr. Regan, an artist. But it could get by. Oh, uh, uh, to the unpracticed eye, yes. To the layman, perhaps, yes. Mm-hmm. That's all I wanted to know. Later in Anguis Herba, eh? What was that? Latin. A snake in the grass, eh? Maybe. Your expression tells me you are concerned for the safety of this piece. I have a safe here in my room, if you care. No, to... it'll be all right. Well, then, you leave satisfied, I trust. Yeah, thanks. Think nothing of it, Mr. Egan. Think nothing of it. Just remember the house of Tartaglia when you want fine jewels. Good evening, sir. <laughs> In the lobby, I got two three-cent stamps from the clerk. He watched me put the diamond quartet in an envelope, address it to myself, and mail it right there. He blinked a couple of times, but I didn't tell him about my two pals parked across the street in the little gray coop. Well, they were sitting there, still sucking on cigarettes and pulling on their hat brims. When I walked outside, they got out of the coop, came over to where I was lighting a cigarette. The tall one tapped me on the shoulder. Here's the paper, Georgie. Want to ask him for a match? Georgie's nearsighted. That's too bad. That's him, Danny. Got a match, Peeper? Georgie asks if you got a match, Peeper. He's a dummy, Georgie. Don't talk. Got a match, Peeper? But I tell you, he's a dummy. He don't look like no dummy. Why, he's a dummy, all right, ain't you, Peeper? See, he's a dummy, Georgie. I told him about you being nearsighted, and he said it was too bad. Didn't you, Peeper? He still don't talk. Go on, Peeper. Tell Georgie how sorry you are about him being nearsighted. I told you he was a... I told you he was a dummy, Georgie. I'll privatize like you. Georgie asked you a question. He wants to know if all privatizes like you. Danny boy says you're a dummy. You're a dummy? Georgie asked you another question. He wants to know if you're a dummy. See, don't answer. I don't like dummies. We asked three questions already, and he ain't said nothing. That makes him a dummy. Maybe we'd find something if we went through the dummy's pockets. Yeah, even a dummy's got pockets. Ain't that right, dummy? Hold him, Georgie. Hey, move just like a dummy. What do you want? Hey, talk. Yeah, yeah. Make him talk again, Georgie. Make him talk bigger, Georgie. Talk's real nice, but he don't say much. Maybe he's tough, Georgie. He might think he's tough. But then again... You see? He ain't so tough. Now it's my turn. Hey. He don't talk no more, Danny. This peeper ain't no pretty picture, Georgie. Why you want to hold him up? You are listening to the story of the Diamond Quartet. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. <laughs> Twenty-nine thousand nurses are needed now to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. For the first time in history, qualified nurses are given the opportunity of receiving a commission in the regular Army Reserve. These nurses will remain on inactive status, ready to serve their country in the event of an emergency. Four thousand of them, if they wish, may choose active duty. Inactive reserve status will not interfere with the nurse's civilian life, but the educational opportunities offered her by the Army Medical Department will be of a great advantage to her in her work. So don't wait. If you're a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card now for complete information to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now, back to the story of the Diamond Quartet and Jeff Regan, Investigator. <laughs> Sure he's coming too. He had quite a beating, Mr. Lyon, but he's coming around. Regan, 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 can you hear me? Can you hear me? Regan, can you hear me? I think he's with us now. Hmm. It's me, Regan. What happened to you? Why didn't you call? 
Regan, do you understand me? Hmm? What's this? That's your head. And it isn't very pretty, let me tell you that. I'll be at my desk, Mr. Lyon. No, all right. Come on, give it to me. What happened? An hour ago, the receiving hospital telephones me that they picked you up in some gutter. I come down to see what's what, and you lay there and ask me what's this. Well, it's a wrong job. Another punk client. As long as they've got the dough, we love them all. Who are you fighting with? A couple of boys named Danny and Georgie. Mm, a couple of boys named Danny and Georgie. Mm. Well, would you mind telling me just where you've been while you should have been doing what you were hired to do? I was out with Danny and Georgie. Sure. You were out with Danny and Georgie. But what did you do before that? And what did you do with the necklace? That diamond quartet or whatever it is. I mailed it. You mailed it? You were hired to deliver that thing personally, and you mail it. Where's my clothes? <laughs> Regan, I'll never understand you. I'll never understand you or the way you do things. I send you out on a simple little job. All you have to do is take a necklace back, and what do you do? You wind up bleeding all over the city streets. Here's your pants. What time you got? Three o'clock in the morning. It's always three o'clock in the morning when somebody telephones me that you're in trouble somewhere. Well, why don't you go home and go back to bed? I haven't been to bed. I haven't had one wink of sleep tonight. You know why? Because on top of all my other troubles, some dame who sounds like she has a suit full of hoops has been calling my place every half hour asking for you. My place. Why didn't you tell her to call my place? I did tell her to call your place. I told her a couple of hundred times to call your place. Then I told her to shut up. Coat. Here. Uh, you look terrible. Terrible. She give you a name? Oh, Annabella something or other. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what I want to know is... Uh, hey, where are you going? Who's going to pay this hospital bill? What are you... Where are you going? Well, the cab driver circled twice before he picked me up, but he got me out to her place in 20 minutes. When I got upstairs, her door was halfway open, and the light from the hallway kind of seeped in. She was sitting in a big chair right by the door. I don't know why, but she was holding the phone on her lap, just sitting there, looking at nothing. Oh, Mr. Reader. It's you. You came back. Yeah. I don't think you're going to need this. Oh. Well then, Mr. Regan. Well then. I suppose you've met some people tonight who know a great deal about me. Some? A gambler? A jeweler? And of course they told you how I carry on with money and all that. Everyone seems to know that. Yeah, Bailey told me. Do you know about Charles? Charles and I had so many things together. and It was so much fun being alive with him. You like to have fun, Mr. Regan. I, I do think he enjoyed being alive with me. I mean, I, I, I cried when Charles was killed. I really did. I cried. I, I didn't know what to do. I cried. How long ago was that? Oh, Charles was killed three years ago. But now I have Teddy. He's really a dear. You should meet him. We should all have a drink together or something. Teddy's a fine artist. Very fine artist. I think you'll be very prominent someday. I, I do. I, I really do think Teddy will be very prominent someday. Of course, it wouldn't make any difference now. Did they tell you that I... I, 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 I did they tell you... It's funny. I can't seem to get my tongue adjusted to my mouth. Did that ever happened to you, Mr. Regan? Sometimes. Teddy asked me to marry him tonight. He did? Yes, I I I, I, I I've been very lonely since Charles died, and it isn't my money that Teddy's interested in, I'm I'm certain. Teddy has some money of his own, although many people don't know it. <clears throat> what is money, Mr. Regan? What would you say, my, 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 money? Oh dear, there I go again with that business about my tongue. <laughs> You think I should see a correction? Why did you call me tonight? You're the only detective I know. And I, I really don't know you. It's just that Mr. Daly said you were a detective. Why did you want to see me? I really can't understand money. I know it must sound strange to you, but... <laughs> some people live for it, and... and... Some people die for it, and... 
Help me, Paul. Come here. What's wrong? What is it? Come on. Oh, they do look so funny. So very funny. I've seen them count money. Oh, so much money. And I, I really believe that's all they look for. They handle it and caress it now. Come on, tell me what's wrong. What is it? What is it? She was pointing to a black spot across the room. I found the light switch and turned it on. Oh, yeah. They looked funny, all right. It was Daly and his dumb roulette table man, Felix. And both of them were as dead as you can get. Your name's Silco? Oh, 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 yes, I was expecting... My name's Regan. I'm a private investigator. I'm calling from her apartment. Annabella's? Well, now, you... listen. There's been a couple of murders here. What? She's had quite a jolt. She's going to need you and all the help she can get. I called homicide and... Well, it might be kind of rough for her. I'll bring a doctor. And a lawyer. Well, I've got a good one. I'll be there in ten minutes. Thank you. Well, he showed up about the same time when Daddy and the homicide boys got there. By that time... She couldn't even talk, and they had to put her to sleep. I told Wendetti what I knew about it, and he said we'd get it straightened around as soon as she had something to say. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning when I got home. I didn't expect my boy to show up so soon. He was already there. Ah, Regan. I've been expecting you. Come in, sir. Come in. I've been amusing myself with your chessboard. So we meet again. Sit down, sit down. You've had rather a hectic night, I'll wager. Your boys were pretty rough. Georgie and Danny. Uh, two men of another world, Regan. Not our world. Allow me to apologize for their actions. And so unnecessary, too. I underestimated you, Regan. Such an ingenious method of protecting the diamond quartet. Why, sir, by the simple expedient of placing a three-cent stamp on an envelope and mailing it to you yourself, you were hired as guardians the entire United States Postal Service. Not to mention the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps. You want one of these? No, thank you, Regan. Much too early in the day. But uh, go ahead. You give me cause to admire you again, sir. I am one of those faint-hearted persons who cannot abide liquor until five o'clock in the afternoon. All right. What happens now? By God, I admire your directness, Mr. Regan. When I met you last night, I promised myself you'd give me trouble, and you have. Who's in on it? Such directness. In answer, sir, that is a matter to be explained. Double cross. If you can bear my vanity, I have invented a new word. Triple cross. It does have a ring to it, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. <laughs> my God, sir, I like you. Daily in on this? Daily? No, 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 of course not. A mere instigator. But when Madge explained to me that he was returning the diamond quartet, I first conceived the plan. Just plain Madge. She and her friends have been very valuable to me. They knocked off Daly and Felix and planted them in the girl's apartment. Right. With two cadavers in her living room, Mrs. Callender was very unlikely to discuss missing jewelry with the police. Then it was a phony she was wearing, and she didn't even know it, huh? Mm-hmm. And it caused all of this. If you had merely returned it, it would have been simple to remove it from her. But then... And you just sit here and wait for the mail. We wait for the mail, Mr. Regan. What about your playmates? <laughs> you do act your role, don't you? And I like you for it, Mr. Regan. I wish you and I could have worked out something together. An unbeatable team. In answer, sir, I'm afraid I shall be sought for murder for two this night. Danny and Georgie? And, uh, Madge. Does that name bother you as much as it bothers me? Give me a woman with a name like Celeste or... Josephine or Roxanne. Those are our proper names for the creatures. But Madge. <laughs> Where are the police going to find all these bodies? In my hotel room, which I departed hastily. I know a man down at Central Homicide named Wendetti. Do you? Mm-hmm. He's the best cop I've ever seen. You'll never get away with it. Allow me to correct you, sir. I don't intend to get away with it. Observe me well. You see before you 
a man advanced in years, attached to a destitute and bankrupt jewelry firm with nothing more to look forward to than a grim few years and finally the end. Now, an opportunity to live like a king, and by God, sir, I've taken it. They'll pick you up before you can pack a bag. <laughs> I'll risk that. I shall turn the diamond quartet into cash, and with a well-laden purse, I shall be satisfied to elude the police over half the world. Oh, yes, they'll get me in two years, three years, perhaps. By that time, I shall have spent the money, and what more could a man ask than a perfect fulfillment of all his wishes? Huh? I ask you, sir, as one gentleman to another, what more could a man ask? You have company, and I have a gun. Answer it. Tell him to go away. I'll be right beside you. All right. Open it. One side, Jamis. I got a gun. Madge. Thought I'd find you here, blah, blah, boy. Get into such a good... Get on me. Caution, my dear. I have a gun, too. I can last long enough to let you have it. Get out of my way, people. Oh. Uh, Mr. Regan. Mr. Regan, sir. I believe I, I've been shot. I need a little assistant. I, I can't seem to hold my feet, sir. I can't seem to hold my feet. The mortal is Neil Missy Bonham, Mr. Regan. Or if your second year Latin escapes you, speak well of the dead. It was an awkward plan at best. Was it? was a lousy idea. Well, there wasn't anybody left for Wendetti to arrest, so we sat around and looked at each other. Wendetti agreed that Madge double-crossed Daly, Tartaglia double-crossed Madge and her boys. Yeah, triple-crossed. Well, the lion had something on his mind. He wanted to know, was I satisfied with what I got out of this case? I didn't answer him. I need the job. The Army Nurse Corps Reserve still has commissions available. If you are a graduate registered nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, you may be eligible for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps section of the regular officer's reserve. Graduate work is provided at the Army's most modern teaching centers, and the nurses obtain educational experiences that benefit them in both civilian and military nursing. If you believe you qualify for a commission in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. <laughs> Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan, with Wilms Herbert as Anthony J. Lyon. The role of Bert Tartaglia was played by Barry Kroger. Lorreen Tuttle was Annabella Callender. It's CBS same time next week for Trouble, Suspense, and Thrilling Adventure with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by E. Jack Newman, produced by Gordon T. Hughes, directed tonight by Cliff Howell. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 